Ah, God is so good. He is so good. And he, he is, it, in, in, spite, in spite of who we are, He loves us. I mean, it'd be one thing if we like, had it all together and we're awesome. But I can speak for myself that I am far from there. And yet His love for me is just so caring and gentle. And even when I, I drift away and I kind of start to do life my own way, you know, pastors do that on occasion. He just... He says, Donnie, I love you. <laughs> Come spend some time with me. Sometimes I feel like he says, don't be such a knucklehead. Come here, let me love you. Don't you just get that sense from the Father? I mean, I think calling him our Heavenly Father is just so dead on, isn't it? He's that perfect Father that you can climb up in his lap and you can sit and you got a busted knee and he'll just he'll put some ointment on it and a Band-Aid. Remember when you were a kid and you'd run to mom or dad and they just knew what to say and what to do and I just feel like our Heavenly Father just does that so, so perfectly for us. One of these days, I'm going to preach Ezekiel 37. If it kills me, I'm going to preach it. But Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, I should say, Monday evening, as I'm sitting up in my little study area, and I sat down, I opened Ezekiel 37 to start preparing for this morning, and I thought, I just thought in my heart, you left those boys in the fire. You, you left them, Donnie, you left them in the furnace. We were, we were talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and facing the furnace and standing before Nebuchadnezzar. And, you know, we talked about that, you know, even where, where, where those three boys said, you know, even if God does not, yet I will. Let's be clear. I will not worship you. I will not worship your gods. I will only worship my true God, even if he doesn't save me at that moment. And we took that into our lives, right, that we would have faith in our lives to stand, and say, my God will deliver me. My God will walk through life with me. But even if he doesn't, I will not. I will not believe in anything but him, right? We left that. And so I'm, st- I'm, I'm in Ezekiel 37. I'm, I'm reading and I'm like, gosh, that's, I left them there. I can't, I can't leave them in the fire. I just can't leave those boys in the fire. Not after they stood so courageously for God. So... Thursday night, I'm, I'm driving home from men's group, and I, I wanted to call my mom and dad and catch up, so I call, I call them, and my mom, like, less than a minute into the conversation, oh, hi, how are you? She's like, your dad's got to talk to you. He needs a phone. And I said, okay. She said, he's been talking about it all week since Sunday, and I thought, oh, man, my message, it must have been something. I mean, if my dad's been talking about it all week, it, it must have been the messages of all messages. I'm like, I got to make sure that thing is recorded. He picks the phone up, not eating anything. Others say, you left those boys in the fire. You can't leave them in the fire. You got to get them out of fire. What are you preaching on this week? I said, I'm preaching the rest of the verses. <laughs> yes, sir. So we are not preaching Ezekiel 37. We are going to get these boys out of the fire this evening, this morning, all right? So, in Daniel 3, verse 19, Daniel 3, verse 19, I, you know, I got to just pause for a second. Is that not incredible, though, that God works in that way just to confirm? Because I've been, I've been feeling like, Ezekiel 37 is where we really need to go as a church. And then he brought me to Daniel 3. And then I'm thinking, okay, now we move forward. And then I'm like, no, I don't, I don't really think I'm supposed to move forward. And then get to get confirmation from my father that, no, you're supposed to finish out Daniel 3. I thought, that is the goodness of God. The Spirit of God moving in my everyday life. I, if you don't hear anything else from this message today, hear this. That the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you is not just for Sunday. That he lives in you every single day. In everything that you face, you do not face alone. Gosh, I love him. 
I love him. Look at Daniel 3, verse 19. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. Did you ever break something in your home when you were a kid? I mean, something that shattered, that was really important. Did you ever have that happen after your mom or your dad said, stop doing that, or this is going to happen? Do you ever been there? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, stop bouncing the basketball. Stop bouncing. If you do, you're going to break something, stop bouncing the basketball, Don. Boom, boom. <laughs> Grandfather's oil lamp. Center globe with the date. Now, my mom could have been like Nebuchadnezzar and been distorted with rage. And she was worse because she cried. And I went from being six feet around that time to like, so I crawled off. That's not what Nebuchadnezzar did. Nebuchadnezzar is so furious at these boys that it says his face just contorted in rage. You know what that looks like? Just what that feels like. He is beside himself. He is losing his mind. I want you to see that because that's so important of where this goes for these three young men. He's not just aggravated. And he's not just heartbroken. He is rabidly furious at these guys because they dare not bow and worship and obey and do what he said he would do. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. The significance there is that that the idea of seven times is to heat it as hot as possible. I did a little bit of research because I'm curious so this furnace, I don't know what pictures you've seen of it before, but doing a little bit of research back in the area, what it would have been is it would have been this almost like a tube kind of thing that almost think of like a vase that had a, it was wide at the bottom and it would kind of come up to a, a top and they would throw, the idea is it was for smelting metal, like gold and things like that. That's why it would have been there because it was, the statue was covered in gold and so they would have had this furnace where they would have put the, the raw material in and then it would have smelted and then you would get it out of this side Apartment, right? So he's heated up seven times. Like the, the, the flames are just shooting out of this thing. Do you have a picture of this furnace? You got this, this king that has just lost his mind in rage, and this furnace that is just huge and just flames are shooting. Like it's just barely staying together. You got the picture? Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the burning furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, their turbans, their robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. I'm going to get them out. Everybody be like, Dad, I'm going to get them out. I'm not going to leave them there. But you've got to see the correlation between this picture and the fires that we walk through in our life. Think about it. An enemy raging at us as followers and believers in Jesus. The enemy, the devil, whatever your name for him is, Satan. Just raging, furious, contorted. How dare you not get caught up in the things of this world? So he comes after you with everything that he has. It says that that Nebuchadnezzar got the strongest soldiers that he had to bind them. So there were no way that they could get out. And it says when they were thrown into the fire, it says they were securely tied and fell helplessly into the roaring flames. I just believe that for us, especially those of us that are going through the fire right now, that it feels like that. Where you... Me and others are just helpless. There's no way out. 
He took the strongest men there was to bind them and throw them into a burning flame, clothes and all. You know, to, not to be too morbid because we have, we have little ones with us, but you gotta think about why mention the clothing? Why mention the clothing? Because the clothing would catch immediately. Just horrible, horrible death, horrible way to die. And he deliberately did it. Listen, the things that you're going through, they're deliberate. It's not accidental. Hey, I'm not saying that we can't cause our own grief and our own trouble, okay? Sometimes we just make bad decisions as human beings. Can we just agree on that? We do. Okay, you don't. I do. I make bad decisions. And sometimes that can cause my life pain and discomfort and and confusion. I can put myself in really bad places, and, and so can you. But sometimes the enemy of our soul just comes against us just because he is in a fit of rage. And you can look around in your world and think, how in the world did I get here? What in the world did I do to have this happen? Some of the craziest times, and some of you, you will know this to be true. You have had a moment with God. Or maybe you were on your knees and you stood up and you just know something was different in your heart. I mean, you were close to daddy. You and daddy been at the baseball game. You know what I mean? You just had that moment with Father God that you're just connected at the heart. And you're like, man, this is awesome. And you go to Monday and you get fired. Or, or whatever. Or something just comes out of nowhere. And you're like, wait a minute. I just had this incredible moment with daddy. How in the world could I be facing something so tragic, so awful? illness, death, overcoming circumstances. How could that happen? I just had this incredible moment. Because there is an enemy of our souls who walks around as a roaring lion seeking who he will devour. So when you were in the middle of the fire, know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into that furnace, were absolutely as helpless as you feel right now. So I want to get you a pic. I want you to have this picture in your life, in my life, of just these overwhelming circumstances. Pain, suffering, fire. You ever burned yourself? Yeah. Pain just doesn't come and go, does it? If you burn yourself really good, the pain stays around for a while. That's the, that's the picture here of the fire. Burning, hurt, pain. Donnie, why are you making such a big deal of this? Because I want, you to, I want you to take that background and I want you to lay that against the next few verses that we're going to read. And I want you to hear the hope of Jesus. I love this part. Is it up there? It is. Let's just read this together. Verse 24. You ready? This is, come on, this is awesome. This is biblical amazement right here. You ready? But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar, he jumped up in amazement, exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty. Yes, we certainly did, they replied. Look, look, there's four. I see four unbound. No, 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 you don't get it. You don't get it. Listen, I I know, I know, it's church and you're quiet. It's not a baseball game. I totally get it, but listen to me. They were thrown into the fire completely bound by the strongest men that Nebuchadnezzar could find. There was no hope. There was no way out. There was absolutely no way they were escaping those flames. And Nebuchadnezzar says, wait a minute, there's four and they're all unbound. Walking around in the fire unharmed. I just got to grab that. Think about your circumstance. Think about your fire. Think about your hurricane. Think about the devastation that you're walking through or you have walked through right now. Think about it. With Jesus by your side, you walk around in the fire 
unharmed. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door. So remember, they dropped him in the top, and there's a side, so he's in the fire, and he's looking. He shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. Can you just, just imagine that? I mean, you just have to see the miraculous power of your God. Your God, my God, our God. You got to see this. See, we read these stories and we see the little flannel board, right, when we're kids, and it's fantastic. But when you start to lay that against your life and you start to think, man, I've been there. In fact, I'm there right now. I'm in the middle of the fire. There's no way out. There's no way. There's no hope for me. And yet Jesus taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, I'm here. What that have been like for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? When they fall through, they fall into the fire. And they're, they're moving around. And Jesus is there. Oh, Donnie, this is, that's just kind of symbolic. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not, symb- that's not symbolism. That's reality. That three men were thrown into a fire with no way out. Jesus appears. The bonds are released. There is freedom in Jesus. In the middle of the fire. You got to grab that. Listen to me. If you're looking for freedom once the fire is put out, no. No. Freedom right now in the middle of the storm, the peace that passes all understanding because Jesus is standing next to you in the middle of the fire and he says, let me take care of you. In fact, come with me, kid. Let me show you around the furnace. This is what the enemy had laid out for you, Donnie. This is what he laid out for you. He laid out a trap. He laid out a trap that when you were young and, and, and you, you when, when, when him, that guy up there, called you to pastor, the enemy laid a trap for you. And you, you bought into it. And he threw you into this furnace. But take a walk with me. Let me show you. Let me show you what the trap is, what it really is. And then let me show you how we're going to defeat it. Let me show you how we're going to walk out of it. Come on with me. Let me show you the way out, Donnie. And he takes those three boys. He, take, he took me to the entrance and said, go ahead. But I don't want to go. I want to stay with you. No, no, no. You go. I'll be right with you. But you go. Because I've delivered you. I put a call in your life that's not going to go away, and so you're going to get to pastor again. You're going to get to go back home to Westminster. And you're going to get to pastor again, Donnie. And what the enemy put in your life to destroy you, where you seemed that there was no way out, I've made a way for you. I've released your bonds and now you are free. So you go. You go. And don't forget, if it ever happens again, I'll be right beside you, standing in that fire as well. See, that's what happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they stepped out of the fire. They stepped into what God had for them. Look, look, look at what it says. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, the officials, the governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. 
they didn't even smell like smoke. Here's what I want you to understand. When you are willing to stand in the fire with your Jesus, the miracles follow. The miracles follow. When we try and do things on our own and we try and work things out and we kind of go our own way, we pick Jesus up on Sunday and leave him in church on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. When we do those kinds of things, he's sitting there and he's going, gosh, I got so much more for you. I got so much more for you. But when we stand with him, beside him, and we walk in the furnace with him and the bonds are released and there's freedom in the middle of the, in the, middle of the fire, the miracles follow. They didn't even smell like smoke, folks. That, that nothing on their clothing was even singed. It's like they'd never even been in the fire. Some of us here today can testify to that very thing. You see, Donnie, I remember this time in my life and I was in the middle of the fire. The storm was raging, the fire was raging and Jesus stood beside me and delivered me. Hmm. Verse 28 says, And Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. This is Nebuchadnezzar speaking. Therefore, I make this decree if any people whatever, their race, their nation, their language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted, <laughs> the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. That is our God. That is our God. That is your Jesus. That is my Jesus. And I want to close with a question, just a very simple question. Do you believe in the gospel of Jesus? That you were a sinner, or are a sinner if you don't know him. We're all sinners. That he came to earth as a baby. They nailed him on a cross and crucified him for my sin, for your sin, for our sin. Three days later, Father God raised him from the dead and now he sits in heaven at the right hand of the Father waiting for the moment to come back and take us home. That's the gospel of Jesus. Very simple. So the simple question is, do you believe that? Are you a believer? Do you believe that Jesus came and died and because of his sacrifice you once again can have communion with the Father and that for all of eternity do you ever stop and think about that? For all of eternity how long is that? It's like 4.7 billion no, no it's just tri trillion quad, quad quad trillion it's there's no end ever and you'll be with the Father forever because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. That's the gospel. That's the good news. So my question is, do you believe that? Would you close your eyes for me? Please. Nobody looking around. Nobody looking around. Maybe up to this moment, you've never heard of the gospel of Jesus. Or maybe you've heard it, but you've never really had an, op an opportunity to accept him. And I want to give you that chance right now. It's going to give you a chance to slip your hand up right now. Just put your hand up. Let me pray for you. Anyone at all. Everybody's eyes are closed. It's a private moment. Anybody at all.
can open your eyes. If we believe that, if we believe the gospel of Jesus, if that is the faith that we stand on, then I have to ask us all a very powerful question. Because the first question is simple, because either you believe or you don't believe. There's really not gray area in that one. But here's the question. If we believe and we stand on the faith of the gospel of Jesus to go through the furnace of our life, to go through the fire that, if that's what we stand, if that's what we believe on, then we have to ask ourselves this question. Am I living my life for my glory and my comfort or his glory? Because you know what you don't hear from these three boys? Attitude. Complaining. Hate. Hate on and on and on they just very quietly very respectfully your majesty remember that from last week your majesty we're just not going to bow to your God we don't have to defend ourselves we're just not going to bow there's a confidence in that that we have to have if we believe then we have to live our life for his glory because here's what I want you to see because of the testimony Simply their statement of faith, what they believe, what they would do or not do based on their faith in Jesus, based on their faith in God, their testimony changed Nebuchadnezzar. Changed his whole outlook. It wasn't bow to my statue, bow to my God. By the way, what they believe is, is that pedestal it was nine feet wide, it was 90 feet high, and at the top would have been one of their gods that they, Marak, Marak, or something like that. I can't pronounce it exactly right, but it would have been a, just a, a monument to the god that they, and, and that was what he said. If you don't bow to that, then you are going to be thrown into the fire, right? But because of the testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, He said, if you don't worship their God, (laughs) then you're going to tear you from limb from limb. Maybe a little strong. But you see the change? How did Nebuchadnezzar come to know the true God? Through the testimony of three teenage boys not willing to compromise and standing on the faith of their God. In the middle of the fire, not just after the fire. In the middle of it, before it it happened, they were willing to go into the fire, knowing that they may not survive, but still trusting God no matter what. It's that testimony. Folks, we have got to understand that people are watching. See, the story narrows But don't forget, there were hundreds, if not thousands of people there on the hillside, all bowing down. Do you remember that? And here's three boys that did not. And so now they're called up to the the, the king. But all those people are still there. Nobody went home. I don't read that anywhere. They're all still there. They're watching these three boys stand on their faith. Even if he doesn't save us, yet we will not bow to your God even if he does not heal me yet I will not bow to your God even if he does not save me financially I will not bow to your God even if I lose my job and I can't find another job yet I will not bow to your God are you starting to get the idea of what we're talking about here People watching those boys. People are watching your life when you're going through your life and you're going through the storm and you're going through the fire and you're making declarations in your heart that regardless of what happens to me, no matter how things turn out, yet I will serve him. That becomes your testimony. Have you ever asked this question or heard somebody ask this question? Why do good things happen? Why do bad things happen to good people? I can tell you why. You want to know why? Come back next week. No. Let me tell you why. Because that becomes their testimony of what God did for them. 
and you know this to be true, there is nothing more disheartening or even makes you angry when you sit across a table from someone and they say, oh, I know what you're going through. And they have no idea because they've never walked through it. But how encouraging is it? How awesome is it to sit across from someone that has gone through exactly what you've gone through? And you've seen their life and they're able to share with you, I know what you're going through and here's how God delivered me. Do you see the power of a testimony? Do you see why James would write, consider it all joy? My brothers, when you go through trials and temptations and hard times, you know why he would say that? Because what's happening is, is God is, going about, God is going to use you. God is going to use me to reach somebody else. Do you realize, listen to me, do you realize that by the way you handle the trials and difficulties and the fires in your life, when, when, when you walk through those things with Jesus and people see that, do you realize that they could actually end up in heaven because of how you handled a fire or a storm. And you know that's true. You've had people ask you, what is wrong with you? How can you be so joyous? How can you be so happy? What is wrong with you? I know what you're going through right now. You've had those conversations, haven't you? You've seen them. That's why this was such a powerful story for us. Because right now we're living through some pretty tough times as Christians, aren't we? pretty hard right now how we conduct ourselves how we live our lives out loud becomes our testimony of the God that we serve Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego's testimony was we will not even if he doesn't and look how that turned out they still went through the fire you hear me God never said you're not going to have difficult times. That's why I'm saying, who are, we, who are we living our life for? His glory or ours? He, he never said we're not going to have difficult times. What did he say? You're going to have them, didn't he? You will be persecuted for my name's sake. I don't care what Bible you use, what translation you use. We're going to have difficult times. But what he said was, is I will stand with you in the fire. I will walk through it with you. Why? I believe it's so that we can point other people to him with our lives. Listen, and I'll close with this. You can tell people all day long. You can quote scripture backwards and forwards. You can, you can quote the entire book of Genesis backwards and forwards. You can quote the entire New Testament. You can tell them the incredible revelations of the book of Revelation. You can do all of that. And nothing, nothing in all of that is as powerful as how you live your life when they see you go through difficult times. It is what we do as Christians, not what we say as Christians. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have said, hey, even if he doesn't, we still will. We will not bow. And then when as soon as he realized that they were being bound, they could have fought and run and done other, that. didn't do any of that, right? You see what I'm saying? We've got to be willing to live our Christianity out loud in the middle of the fire. Let Jesus save us so that we can be a witness and a testimony to other people. That they can find him as we know him. Would you stand with me this morning? Is there anyone here this morning that would would just simply raise your hand and say, I'm in the middle of fire right now. One back there, one back there, one up there, one back there, one over there. One there. Yeah, I'm with you right now. So um, if you would just kind of look around, just put your hand towards those folks. We're going to 
just kind of stretch out your hands towards them, right? And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Hey, Dave, would you take care of my brother over there? Let's put your hand towards him, please. Thank you, sir. Father God, some of us right now, we are in the middle of the furnace and the fires are overwhelming. And Father, we don't see any way out. We tried. We tried everything that we know to do. And Father, I pray that it right now, in the name of Jesus, we would look and see you standing with us in the fire. That we are never alone, Lord. Right now as we pray, that peace, that joy, that comfort, that sweetness of being close to you, Lord, immediately, Holy Spirit, fill the lives of these dear brothers and sisters right now the peace that passes understanding let them look with your eyes and see you Jesus standing right next to them in the fire guiding loving encouraging blessing and to the devil and the demons of hell I say to you in the name of Jesus you have no place here and you must flee you will leave these dear people alone in the name of Jesus. And I pray protection. I pray for answers. I pray for clarity. Father, I pray for peace. That they will have a testimony that says that Jesus stood with me in the fire and we walked out unharmed we stand on that father we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and we put our faith in that above anything else in this world and we stand together united in the name of Jesus and all of this all of it should be for your glory and your honor alone in Jesus name